The ambassador of the Russian Federation three minutes ago confirmed that his president declared a war on my country. President Putin, in the name of humanity, bring your troops back to Russia. We are seeing Russian military operations inside the sovereign territory of Ukraine on a scale that Europe has not seen in decades. It is wrong. It is against the Charter. United Nations staff are working on both sides of the contact line. We had not left, we are not leaving, but we're expanding our presence in Ukraine and scaling up efforts. A lot of these families were in bunkers last night or two nights ago, and now they're finally able to get out to Poland. Homes, schools, orphanages, and hospitals have all come under attack. At this rate, the situation looks set to become Europe's largest refugee crisis this century. These populations, these displaced people, they need support. They need our backing. Today we're launching a humanitarian appeal for the Ukraine crisis. WHO is establishing a pipeline of supplies for health facilities throughout Ukraine. My team is protecting pregnant women from the risk of childbirth, even in the middle of a war. They are safe here, they know, but their journey is not finished. The result of the vote is as follows. This is going to affect supply chains and particularly the price of costing of food. This breadbasket helps us feed the world. Yemen, Ethiopia, Syria, and I can go on and on. Wherever there is a war, the highest price is paid by civilians. We should feel ashamed that in 2022 we continue to see violence that may constitute genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. The sooner we end this war, the better. The president agreed in principle to the involvement of the United Nations in the evacuation of civilians from the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. This is one of the fastest scale-up operations we have ever undertaken. We are here to deliver a nine trucks 20 tons each with the humanitarian assistance. These ports are shut down because of this war. We need to get the ports open, operational. It's absolutely crucial right now to help the, the farmers. What is uh, impressive is to see that the Ukrainian population is trying to resume a normal life. Their capacity to be resilient to the current situation. And let there be no doubt, this is an agreement for the world. In less than a month, 25 ships have departed from Odessa and other Ukrainian ports, loaded with grain and other food supplies, with more on their way. The Secretary General will be in Lviv on Thursday. This ship is a symbol of what we can accomplish when we act together. Ukraine wants peace. Europe wants peace. The world wants peace. Кризисные явления нарастают. Положение в области международной безопасности стремительно деградирует. I remain gravely concerned about the situation in and around the Zaporizhia plant including reports of recent shelling. We're going to have a continued presence there uh, at the plant with uh, some of my experts. Invading a neighbor is illegal. Annexing territories of other countries by force is illegal. The United Nations is gravely concerned about the destruction of critical energy infrastructure. 
It is a winter landscape. Sometimes there are blackouts, the electricity doesn't work. I had to move this meeting down here to this shelter because air sirens went off. There was a wave of missile attacks against Ukraine. UN staff in Dnipro traveled in six preloaded trucks and headed to the Donetsk region in the worst of those war zones. After one year, I think we're becoming a little bit used to this. We shouldn't, because it's quite appalling what the Russian invasion is doing to the country. Peace must be established. In line with international law and the UN Charter. This war must end.